Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at relative frequency. Um, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to use histograms and hi tables to understand and model probabilistic situations. So here's some new notation for cumulative relative frequency tables. We've got our scores here. F sub R, that just means relative frequency. Here we've got the score times the relative frequency. Here we've got the score squared times the relative frequency. And here we've got the cumulative relative frequency. So what do I mean by each of these? Well, here we've got an example. The table and histogram is a model of the probability of getting a particular number of heads in a four coin toss experiment done 100 times. So four coins were tossed 100 times and the amount of heads, the number of heads was recorded in this table. So according to this, the probability of getting zero heads is 0 0.07 which means 7%. The relative frequency of getting one head according to this experiment is 0 0.29 or 29%. Of getting two heads is 0 0.34 or 34%, etc. So it's important for you to remember that the, there's a difference between theoretical probability and relative frequency. Okay. Theoretical probability is what it should be. If we didn't conduct an experiment, what do we expect the probability to be? However, relative frequency is pretty much experimental probability. What is the probability of this event occurring based on the results of this experiment that has already been conducted? Okay, so here, because this is all relative frequency, we can tell that an experiment has been conducted, and so we can work out what the relative frequency is. Now remember, all the probabilities will always add to 1. Okay, we can't have a probability that's greater than 1, that's just not possible. Here we've got the, I've already mentioned before, the score times the relative frequency. And the purpose of this was, we learned about this in year 11, was when we added each of these together, we get 1.96. But what is that? That is actually equal to the expected value of x. Okay, that's actually the mean, mu. In the line below it, we've got x squared, the score squared times the relative frequency, so 0 squared times 0 0.07 is 0, 1 squared times 0 0.29 is 0 0.29, 2 squared times 0 0.34 is 1.36, 3 squared times the probability of 0 0.21 is 1.89, etc. Right? Now, the whole point of this line is because when we add them together, we get 4.98, which is the expected value of x squared. And we need that when we're trying to work out variance. When we want to work out the variance of x, we know that the formula is equal to the expected value of x squared minus mu squared. Or in this case, it's going to be 4.98 minus 1.96 squared, whatever that is. Okay, We actually have the formula in our reference sheet right here. So the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x squared minus mu squared, okay, the mean squared. And here we've got um, the cumulative frequency histogram and polygon right here. Now below is the table and histogram of the theoretical probability, what we expect it to be if we hadn't conducted the experiment. So what it, if, uh, what's the theoretical probability of getting zero heads? It's actually 0 0.0625 or 6.25%. Of one head, 25%. Okay, of two heads, 37.5%, etc. What we have underneath this over here, that's our cumulative um, frequency. Right, we can see when we add these two probabilities, we get 0 0.3125. So it's like saying the probability that the, ran, that the um, random variable will be less than or equal to x or 1 means it has to be the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1. Or when we add the first three 
numbers, 0 0.0625 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.375. That's going to give us 0 0.6875. Okay, this is our cumulative frequency. All right, what's the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to 2? Well, it's the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2. Okay, so that's what this is saying. You can clearly see that there is a slight difference between the two. Okay, it's very rare that the distributions of relative frequency and theoretical probability will match. But the more trials are on, the closer the expected probability, the relative frequency, will be to the actual theoretical probability. So what do I mean by this a slight difference? This is what it should be right here. This is what the um, what the cumulative uh, frequency should be. But what does it look like in our actual experiment? Pro cumulative frequency of the random variable being uh, 0 is 0 0.07, 7%. In reality, we expect it to be 6.25%. What about um, of one, one or less head? Right, the probability that a random variable, random variable will be less than or equal to 1. According to this, it's 0 0.36. What it should be, if we didn't do the experiment, is 0 0.3125. So very, they're very close to each other, 0 0.7, 0 0.6875, 0 0.91, 0 0.9375, 1 and 1. Okay, so they don't differ too much. Um, and we can see that they're quite close to each other, but they're not exactly the same. Okay, I hope that sort of makes sense with um, relative frequency, uh, with what it is and how to calculate it. Um, we're going to have a look at an example now. A simple experiment has generated the following table of discrete data. Part 1. Construct a frequency histogram for the data. Add the frequency polygon to your diagram by joining the centers of the data points. And remember to join the ends of the polygon back to the horizontal axis. Okay, so we're going to draw a frequency histogram. I'm just going to do that to the right over here. A part 1. Okay. Here's my axes. I need a score of 1, 2, and 3. And the frequency goes up to 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let me label my axes, frequency, and score. So 1 had a frequency of 2. Two had a frequency of five, and three had a frequency of three. Okay, that's my histogram. I now need to do my polygon. Polygons from the x-axis to the center of each, and then it goes back. All right, that's part one done. Calculate the total area of the histogram rectangles. So we want to work out the area of the rectangles. There's these three rectangles that we need to add. Okay, we can see that the first rectangle has an area of one times two, which is two. The second one has an error of 1 times 5, which is 5. And the third is 1 times 3, which is 3. So the total area of the rectangles 2 plus 5 plus 3, that's 10. 10 square units. Calculate the total area under the frequency polygon bounded by the horizontal axis. 
So let's get rid of this now. We want to work out the area of the polygon. So I'm just going to draw lines here, here, and here. That's going to help. So let me just highlight these areas. We've got that one. We've got this one. We've got this. And we've got this triangle down here. So the area of a triangle is half times base times height, so half times one times two is one. Uh, let's do the other triangle, half times one times three, that's 1.5. Let's do this orange um, trapezium that we've got here. Height over two times a plus b a is 2, B is 5. Now you'll see that this is very similar to the um, trapezoid rule. So that's just 7 on 2, or 3.5. Let's just write 3.5. And this yellow one here, that is height over 2 times A plus B, so we've got 5 plus 3. So that's 4. Okay, so what do we get when we add all of these areas together, we get 4.5, 8.5, 10. We also get 10 square units. So what do we notice? We notice, we notice that both areas are equal to the total frequency. Okay, because when we add a total, whoops, total, we get 10. Okay, question B, part 1. Copy the table and add a row showing the relative frequency obtained by dividing the frequencies by the total number of scores, which is 10. Okay, so let's do this underneath. Right, so we've got our x, our frequency, and we need our relative frequency as well. 1, 2, and 3. Our frequencies were 2, 5, and 3. So the relative frequency has to be 2 over 10, which is 0 0.2, 5 over 10, which is 0 0.5, 3 over 10, which is 0 0.3. All right, what about part two? Construct a relative frequency histogram for the data, including the relative frequency polygon. Okay, so we've got our scores, one, two, and three. It's gonna look pretty much exactly the same. Our highest relative frequency is 0 0.5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Alright, for 1 it was 0 0.2, for 2 is 0 0.5. And for three, it's zero point three. We also need our polygon, which goes to the centers of each column. Calculate the total area of the histogram rectangles. Okay, so let's work that out. 1 times 0 0.2, 0 0.2. 1 times 0 0.5, 0 0.5. 1 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.3. So when we add them together, we get 1. Calculate the um, area underneath the relative frequency polygon. It's going to be exactly the same. Okay, if we were to draw our lines here, and here, and here, 
It's going to be exactly the same as this one over here. Okay. So it's also going to be um, for part four. It's also going to be one. So what do we notice? We notice that both areas are the same and equal to one, which is, I'm just going to finish that over here, the total relative frequency. I could spell total. All right, part six. What is the relationship between the relative frequencies and the probabilities? P, the probability of the random variable is going to equal to X of the experiment's probability distribution. Okay, so we can see here that relative frequencies are estimates. Of the probabilities okay we should note that both add to one and that they are non-negative okay so all probabilities they cannot be negative Okay, it's not possible to have a negative probability. So they're all non-negative and they all add to one. Both measure the chance that a random value will lie within the given rectangle of the histogram relative frequency is the experimental probability Of an outcome and is an estimate of the theoretical probability. Okay, that's it for this um, lesson. I'll get you to work on exercise 10A, questions 7, 9, and 10 on page 525 to 527.